I'm Trzuski. I'm the lead development engineer. Is some of the real advantages I see with towing with this hybrid is on a launch or when you need your power when you're pulling away, you essentially have the advantage of having an EVT or a CVT, continuously variable transmission, so that when you do drive. Uh, remember how uh, tall this thing is, John, it's yeah. 12 feet tall. When you do drive, you're not getting into the situation where your transmission is upshifting and you're in third gear or fourth gear, but now you've hit a little bit of a grade or you need to apply some more power and you're not quite in the right gear, so you're downshifting to third gear. You don't have this constant hunting of gears and then therefore the drive line bumps and pulls happening. Tronically variable transmission, so you don't have these shifts and bumps. And when you need the extra capability or capacity of torque, you're also dropping into some fixed gears, which is a real strong drive line. So if we did not have the 5,400 pounds behind us right now, we'd still be in electric mode? Could be, depending on how hard he's pushing on the accelerator pedal. Well, assuming he was under 25 miles per hour. Under 20, and, and you know, being relatively ginger on the accelerator pedal he could be. We're going up a grade here too, so really the transmission is going to do what's most efficient and capable for what you're doing with your right foot. So sometimes an EV mode is not very efficient because you're draining the battery and then you're going to have to recharge that battery. So putting the engine on and, and getting the engine to drive up in addition to having electric power is sometimes the most efficient. Power. What, what's the horsepower for the hybrid? Including the electric motors. Oh, that's that's a great question. Here's how we look at that because there is no. I'm sitting next to the SAE guy here, so I can say this. There is no SAE standard yet. God, here's how Toyota does it, and here's how we look at it because it's really we have two um, 60 kilowatt motors in the transmission. Those are about 80 horsepower a piece. But you can't look at it that way. It's really how much energy can you suck out of the engine? That's the bottleneck. That's 332 horsepower. And, and for the electric part of it is, how much energy can you suck out of the battery? That's about 35 kilowatts during a watt condition or a wide open throttle condition. And we can actually achieve that. You can achieve something where you're at 332 horsepower on the engine, and then you could be sucking out of the battery 35 kilowatts, which is about 49 horsepower, I think. So if you add that up, we come out to just under 380 horsepower. It's like 379 horsepower if we follow that method, which is kind of turning into the, like I said, there's no SAE standard, but it's kind of the the right way to do it, so to speak, or how the industry is doing it at this it's point It's where you can compare apples to apples. Yep. The uh, hybrid 6.0. 315. Non-hybrid? Uh, the non-hybrid gasoline 5.3, because it doesn't come in a 6.0 is 315 yeah. horsepower. Yeah. The hybrid 6.0 332 is wow. 332 with the electric motors is 370 something? 379, okay. yeah. Very now there's good. some things we do to get to that 332. That could be higher, but we do some things because we have the electric motors, you know, we're trying to optimize everything. So we don't necessarily want to get everything we can out of just the gas motor and then apply a hybrid system to it. We're optimizing everything. They're all synergistic. The, the gas engine and uh, the electronics, just like AFM. I was telling the, uh, the driver ahead of us, we have active fuel management, and we can do more with active fuel management. We could go into V4 sooner and stay in V4 longer than the non-hybrids. And the reason for that is um, if we're in V4 mode and you need to have uh, some additional torque or you're going up a grade, Instead of just bopping out of V4 mode and going right into V8, we use the electric motors to give you that additional torque. That's the most efficient way at that point in time um, to continue on. You're, at, you're actually sucking energy out of the battery, but it's more efficient than sucking gas out of the engine. You stay in V4 mode a little bit longer, and it's, it's most efficient. The other question, John, is torque. What's the torque on your gasoline 5.3? Torque is, uh, for the hybrid, it's 367, and that's at 4,100 engine RPM. For your gasoline 5.3? Oh, the gasoline 5.3 is 338, roughly at 4,400. Okay, yeah. and, the, and where does it uh, start? Where's the RPM? For the 5.3 liter, it's at 4,400 engine RPM. And for then this, it's at 4,100 engine RPM. 
And again, we have, those are different induction systems slightly. Everything's tuned specifically for that engine, you know, so that it's not truly apples to apples. Well, it's so, the best we can do. Yes, the best we can do. When, when you go into V4 mode on a 6 liter, you do some things on the induction system with quarter wave tuners and Helmholtz resonators. You do some things induction wise and exhaust. You know, we have an exhaust that's specifically designed not only for a V8, but it's designed for a V4. So there's tuning elements in there that are specific to this, not only this engine, but the hybrid package. And you got the CVT that makes the torque seamless and makes it sweet. You drove it, that's right. Yeah. Thanks, Jeff. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs>